So, I'm John Solston. I'm chairing the People and the Planet Working Group here at the Royal Society. It's been a very interesting time for the last 21 months. We have a group of 22 who are drawn from a wide variety of disciplines across the natural and social sciences and from a wide variety of countries in different regions of the world, developed and developing. And so I think we can say that we've had a, a broad-based uh, body of expertise coming in. We've also certainly had some very interesting discussions. We've also uh, put out a call for submissions, uh, for evidence to, to address the, the, the project. And we have um, been on uh, workshops. We've had held workshops here in the UK. We've had workshops in the US, in Ghana, and in Turkey. But why have we been doing all this? It's because we are reaching a very critical time in the development of humanity on the Earth. It's a time which has been presaged repeatedly over the years, people saying, what will happen when we run out of space? Well, the strong evidence now is that we are running out of space in the sense that we are now collectively affecting the, the world's climate. The, the planet as a whole, the well-being of the planet, and therefore of ourselves. And this is due to the still growing human population, not growing quite as fast as it was some years ago, but still growing, and certainly our increasing consumption. And the combination of these two is leading to the effects that we see around us. Now, in looking into this, we have come to a number of conclusions, um, but Let's just highlight the, the, the main points first. The, the um, first is that we must consider population and consumption together. And they have been separated too much. People, certainly for the last 20 years, have been talking very much about consumption and the environment, but not very much about population, or indeed not at all. Not been on the table sufficiently. We need to have both. Otherwise, we're missing out on this increasing number of people and their aspirations, very proper aspirations. The impact on the planet is now clear and the, what we do about it is not so clear because it's difficult, it's fraught, it revolves negotiations between different groups or in very different situations. Because the other major thing that's come out of the study that's really emphasised for all of us is the enormous diversity and inequality and indeed injustice in the world, that some people consume a lot, indeed far beyond what is good for them in terms of food, for example. Other people, a billion people at least, are starving. They don't have enough calories, let alone proper good protein food, which they need to grow well. We also have these great disparities of, of, of fertility, so that some countries have very high fertility, are still uh, producing many children in, to the extent that they cannot educate and feed them all, whereas other countries are not. And the, these differences left to themselves result in arguments which are unproductive. So we need to bring these, these, these factors together and discuss and debate and come to clear conclusions. And at the end of the report, beyond the, 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 the top line things we have to do, which is one, to, to, uh, to lift people out of poverty, the, bottom, the, the poorest billion, to reduce material consumption by the, the most developed countries who are consuming you know, more than they need and, and more than there is room for on the earth, and to bring the unmet need for family planning to those who are most fertile and want to find ways of reducing their families. Beyond all that, we come to a framework. Because the world, the human world, lives in a framework which we call most often global economics. And what we are running at the moment is a system based on GDP which drives consumption. It causes people to compete with each other through trade in a way that they all grow. It's the one thing that all governments say, well, you must grow, you must grow faster than the others. If you think about that for a moment, it's not sustainable. We have got to look for measures, not to sweep away all of that, because these are valuable tools, but to add in the costing of natural capital the pricing of the earth, if you like, the pricing of the resources we use, and the pricing of the price less, the species that we're driving out of existence. If we introduce those costings into economic models, 
And we have to do this through negotiation. It can't just be done by competitive training. Then we can have a more stable structure, a socio-economic structure, which will serve not only us, not only all the members of the current human family, but just as importantly, or if you like, more importantly, the generations to come, who mothers, wives, were depriving of their birthright. So what we're recommending is a rethinking of socioeconomics for the well-being of people now and in the future and of the planet now and in the future.